Yeah. <laughs> Carol, I'm delighted to have Sandra coming forward to give her testimony tonight. She told me she's given it in Shiloh, this will be her third time. So I said, you never know, third time lucky she might get saved. <laughs> 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 I suppose I better start by telling you something about myself. Um, my name is Sandra, for those that don't know. I married a Jimmy, my husband. My daughter's here, Julie. I have two girls and one boy. Thirteen, no, eleven great grandchildren and eight grandchildren. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose uh, life really started for me when my uh, daughter Kelly, the my lives in Isle White, she couldn't be here tonight. And um, when she came in one, well, she just came in quite regularly on a Sunday. And uh, she would always talk about Jesus and what he'd done. And we weren't Christians at that time, Jimmy or I. And I just got to be every week when she came in. We just we're a board of tears, to be honest with you. <laughs> and it got so much at the end that Jimmy ran with the scuff of the neck out through the door and said, we'll come back anymore. <laughs> so we'll come on here and I'm kind of I gave her juice. She was like a, a wee jack russell with a bone. And she came in that door and she said, he's better listen to me. Because I'm telling you, Jesus is real and you need to know your life. So, although, although I uh, was sort of away, pushing her away, at night when I went to bed, I started to think about this Jesus. So, um, and it sort of, I didn't realize then that what conviction was, but I realized after a while that I was being convicted of this. So I decided one night, I came along to church and I listened to Tally's sermon and I went home and I thought, I'm going to ask Jesus in my heart. And I got down on my knees and I asked Jesus in my heart. I, I thought it would have been a big explosion or something like that, and I kept waiting on it. And when that didn't happen, the next night I got down on my knees and I said it again, asked the Lord in the mark and still never felt like this big explosion I was waiting on. But when I um, I felt the Lord was saying, Am I right? Enough's enough. <laughs> you know, men are already. So I went anyway and I started coming to Shiloh every Sunday. And every Sunday I just Knew I was in the right place. Mm -hmm. And when I started crying, it's because of what God has done for me. <coughs> so they came, we came every weekend, you anyway, and um, I was only a Christian, I think, about three months. When a routine uh, mom and sent me up to Breast Clinic in Belfast, and I went up there and I had the most awful dread awful fear because I had already lost three sisters plus my mother to breath to breast cancer. And I just knew when I ended up there, oh, it's my turn to die now. And that's just the way I felt. So they showed me in the room anyway and there was about four or five women sitting and I thought, oh they look as dreadful as I feel inside and I really started to panic something terrible in that room. And I thought, oh, I'm nearly, I really thought I was taking a heart attack on the end. But anyway, I decided I'm going to pray to the Lord because he needs to take his fear away from me. So I started to pray in that room and I said, Lord, please take this dread away from me. I can't stick it any longer. And I hand the words out of my mouth when I heard this. Tally calls it pickled dog, and I'm just trying to it. It came from my feet over my head. And it was just such a peace that was, oh, it was just amazing. 
So when they called me in, I was so calm, and they done a biopsy and put me on me in the waiting room, and they would call me. And I sat there with my husband Jimmy, and I said, Jimmy, they are going to call me in, uh, us in, and tell, tell us that I have the best cancer. I said, how do you know that, Sandra? I said, I don't know, but I know breast cancer, but I know I'm going to be all right, because the Lord told me I'm going to be all right. So I decided then and there, I was trusting in the Lord that I was going to come through that. So the day would call me in and we told Jim and I both that I had breast cancer and that I would need an operation to have it removed. And I went, uh, when I went back to the hospital after having an operation, the doctor said, I have nothing but good news for you. He says, there's no cancer in your lymph nodes. He said, we're just going to remove the lump. And I, I was so relieved. And, and I thought back to that day sitting in the hospital and what the Lord had said to me was, don't fear. I didn't get the spirit of it. If I cry, it's because I know that the Lord is always a host looked after me. And not only did he look after me, he looked after the ones of my, my sisters that have left. I said, all of, all of us, all of us, the strong grace. It just spread throughout my family. First it was Lee, then it was Carly. And Jimmy had said to me, Sandra, if you're going to become Christian, I don't want to know anything about it. Please don't preach to me. And I said, I, I never will preach to you. No, about the Lord, I knew that. <laughs> and, uh, so when I got the breast cancer, Jimmy, uh, on the nose, me had said, Lord, if you save her, I, I will come to you. So that's exactly what the dead Lord did. He, he didn't give me cancer, I know that, but he used that cancer to bring Jimmy to his to before his throne of grace. Yeah. Um, I'm just in awe of the Lord of, of all he has done because um, our Bradley, yes. my son, used to come in every Sunday and he used to say, Oh, the Christians are all here. Hold on, they won't get the land and they'll throw it in. And, it's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that same son is now a pastor of an every life. So, you know, God has worked absolute miracles in order of our lives. So, there. I'm, I'm, a, um, I'm just a sinner that tries your best, the sinless. But I'm also. Um, you know, I try to be a better person today than I was yesterday, and an even better one tomorrow than I am today. And I know that with God's help, that He will get me through it. Yeah. There's a sign on my wall at home that says, "As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord," and we are serving the Lord. All of us. And there's a couple of backsliders, not naming any in particular. <laughs> and I found it when I hope that, that maybe in this testimony and listening to me, getting up here for you, because I am an absolute bundle nurse standing here. I nearly feel sick. <laughs> but I do it because of the Lord, of my love for Him to say. Many times the Lord has brought me, and He always shows me Mary and Martha. And because I'm always busy, I'm more than Martha. But He says to me, Sandra, rest, rest in, in my love, you know, for you. And when I, I remember the first time He showed me Mar Mary and Martha, I cried, but it looks. Because I thought, you yeah, are right, Lord. I spent too much time in the world and not enough time with your feet. So 
and change that so that but every now and again I go a wee bit astray. Not that I don't believe in the Lord because I never I never stop believing in him. But because I get too busy and I know that he need I need to rest at his feet. I just thank the Lord for all that he has done for me. For all he's done with my family. You know I lost all my sisters and they were very young. And when he was the first, he was only 43 years old when she died. Gladys was only 50 and um, Cindy was only 50 when she died. So there were younger women that were cut down in their time of life. I wasn't a Christian when my first two sisters died, but I was a Christian whenever my youngest sister Cindy died. And the Lord, when I went up to see her in the Marie Curie, she was really quite out of it in drugs, so she was, and she wasn't responding to me talking to her at all. <coughs> and I just thought, I need it, even though she's in this state, I need to say something to her. So I went up and I whispered in her ear, Cindy, would you like to know Jesus? And she shook her head, said yes. <laughs> I haven't talked to her all night and no response at all. So I feel blessed that I got the opportunity to lead her to the Lord. I mean, I can't save her, only the Lord can do that. But I was so, oh, I was just in awe of the Lord. Uh, they come out of the hospital. The police have sent me when I knew somebody was going to die. At least I knew she be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I just always think to myself, oh, fuck the Lord, why didn't you save me way back then to save my... To tell my sisters all about you. It wasn't the baby, you know, and the Lord's time was perfect. And I just, I just um, have so much to be grateful for, so I have. And I'm not sure what else to tell you. I'm kind of stuck now. Um, <laughs> that was about your passage that you were <laughs> What? Hebrews chapter 11, you were saying the passage. I felt can't hear you. Hebrews chapter 11, you were saying the, the passage that you were chosen as your favorite verse. Oh, that right, was um, <laughs> 11. 1 to 6. Uh, it's, it's, Hebrews 11. Yeah. Not the same thing. But I, I mean, I don't ask me to repeat it now, tell it, but I've been it as far as I know, so I'll do it. Are you going to be better to repeat it? But, uh, like, all joking aside, isn't our Lord wonderful? Oh, yes. The things that He does for us. And He's always, always in the background, and maybe we don't always see some of the things that He does, but. I, I remember going in the pit many, many times I've been in the pit and I can see the light ahead but I can, I'm scrambling to get to it and I can never, never reach it. And I remember saying, I remember saying even to you, Taddy, one night, um, it's all right for Taddy Gordon to be in this pit, Lord, but I, I don't like it. <laughs> um,
not, it's not an easy thing to stand up and give testimony. It's very, very difficult. And we have known Sandra. She's been very, very faithful to the Lord over the years that she has been saved. And, 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 and Jimmy and his family, uh, just in their, in their constancy and serving God. And it's wonderful to, wonderful to see. Um, you know, maybe people watching them tonight, maybe you know, you've had a diagnosis of cancer, or maybe you know someone who has a diagnosis of cancer. Nowadays, when you hear it, you think that's the party over. You know, that's it. We're, you know, I'm just going to have to uh, die. You know, and try and do it gracefully. But, you know, God can still heal. God can do wonderful things. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody's going to be healed. And why he heals one and doesn't heal the other, I don't know. God is God. That's up to him. But that doesn't mean that you can't ask. That doesn't mean that you can't go to someone. You know, the Bible says, if any among you is sick, call the leaders of the church, let them anoint you with oil and pray for you. And, and, and you will be forgiven for your sins and you will be healed. You know, so but we have prayed in this church for people over the years. And numbers of them have been healed of cancer. Mm -hmm. More so, numbers have died, but nonetheless died knowing Christ. And that's the greatest healing of all. Yeah. Knowing that there's no more suffering or pain. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so if you have any fears about cancer or whatever, speak to Sandra, speak to others here, and people will be pleased to pray with you. Let me just pray briefly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would speak to us tonight through your word. That you, Lord God, would hear, help us to hear what it is that you're saying to us, please. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 When I like to stand, I say, Sandra, tell me what your favourite passage is so that I can preach on it. So she comes to me and says, it says me a message, she says, Hebrews chapter 13, 1 to 6. And I thought, in the name of Nora, how am I going to even preach on that? I thought Corinthians was bad, but when Sandra said, oh, what? And, and then I said, so I look, I said, she hasn't gotten this fit, you know, Sandra's a wee bit of a dash, you know. <laughs> so, so I went to see Mary the Bible study, and I said, Sandra, are you sure it was Hebrews 13? <laughs> One to six. It says, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went, it says, no, it wasn't that. So <laughs> Hebrews 11. Oh, yeah. Hebrews 11, one to six. And it says this. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence or conviction of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead, still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death, and was not found because God had taken him, for before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I have no doubt in my mind tonight that Sandra Anderson has pleased God in her testimony this evening. Anyway, a young man was passing by a field, and he saw an old lady stooped over, planting what he thought were twigs into the ground. And he asked her, what is it that you're doing? And she told him, I'm planting orange trees. And he smiled and he said to her, oh, why are you doing that? Because by the time the trees grow and bear fruit, you will be dead. And the old lady replied, I know I'll never eat the fruit of these trees. I'm planting them for others who will come after me so that they can eat of their fruit, just as I have eaten of the fruit of the trees that others planted before me. By giving her testimony tonight, Sandra is planting, she is sowing the seed of God's word in the hearts and in the minds of those who will listen and receive what she says. And she may never see the fruit of her planting, but faith Tell Sandra, just as the others before her planted the seed of God's word that ultimately brought her to Jesus. So Sandra believes that God's word which she plants will not return to him empty, void, but will accomplish its purpose. The seeds sown by Sandra tonight will eventually produce fruit to the glory of God. 
And the key element, the key element in both of these women's lives, in the old lady and the orange trees, and Sandra and her testimony, is planting and sowing the seed of God's word. And the key element of it is faith. Both women have faith that their good work will produce fruit at the right time. See, if Sandra didn't believe that, she wouldn't be getting up to give testimony. When Sandra said that the reason she's doing it tonight is because of her Lord, that is the testimony that she has given. He is her Lord. How many of us remember people who took time to plant or to sow the seed of God's word in our hearts and minds? Perhaps you had a Christian mother, a Christian father, maybe a Sunday school or RA teacher. Maybe it was just a Christian friend, a gospel tract distributor. Maybe it was a minister of a church, a pastor, or a street preacher. Living in Northern Ireland, it's difficult to avoid hearing the gospel preached. Who first told you about Jesus? Who first planted the seeds? Christian people, just like Sandra, taking time to ensure others would eventually benefit. Others would reap the fruit of their good work, their service unto the Lord, and would come to know Jesus as their Savior. Do you know, I thank God for the Sunday school teachers that used to be in this wee hall in the mid-60s and early 70s when we as kids were sent out as guilt offerings by my mom and dad to Sunday school. And we had to come here and listen to the stories of Jesus and, and the wonderful, wonderful events of the Bible and how God loved us so much. It didn't really mean a lot, but you know what? I thank God today for the Sunday school teachers in this hall who taught children the truths of the, of the Bible, who planted and sowed the seed of God's word in my heart. And in my mind, I thank the Lord. I mean, my tongue nearly sticks in my throat, Sam. But I thank the Lord for a policeman. One night, whenever I was arrested, and instead of beating me in the cells, this man came in and sat down and spoke to me so sincerely about Jesus and my need for Jesus. I thank the Lord for a prison officer who today is with Jesus who constantly, constantly spoke about Jesus when I was in jail, constantly spoke about Jesus to the point where I said, if you talk to me any more about Jesus, I swear I'm going to put an official complaint against you. And I said, that's fine, I'll not talk to you anymore about Jesus. But he still talked to everybody else in the barbershop extremely loudly about Jesus. But I thank the Lord for that man. I also thank the Lord for two Salvation Army sisters who talked to me about Jesus, who didn't give up on me, even when they came to Borstal to visit me. And I walked into the visit room, and there was these two women in their Salvation Army uniform, and I refused to visit. I just said, I'm not taking that visit. I'm too embarrassed. And they kept praying for me, praying week after week, year after year. They prayed and prayed that I would know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Think about it tonight. Who first told you about Jesus? Who was planting the seeds? You know something, Christian? One day, heaven will reveal the people to whom we owe a massive debt of gratitude. The key element in both of the, 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 the stories tonight of the old lady and Sandra planting and sowing is faith. Both women have faith that their good work will produce fruit at the right time. But what is faith? Well, in Hebrews chapter 11, one to 6, which Sandra chose, we're told faith is the substance. It is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence or the conviction of things not seen. Basically, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance that we're going to get what has been promised. How incredible is that? Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance that we will get what is promised. Many before us had faith that they would see the promises of God fulfilled and they lived believing them, his promises to be true. The belief that God, and he has it here in Hebrews, the belief that God created everything requires faith. Now you can choose to believe God 
Or you can choose to believe David Attenborough. I know who I'm going to believe. The belief that God created everything requires faith. Before he was brutally murdered by his brother, Abel had faith in God. And God was pleased with him because God accepted his sacrifice. This guy, Enoch, who walked with God, he pleased God so much that God just took him. And it suggests that Enoch never died. He was out for a walk one day with God. And God just said, come on up into heaven. You don't need to head home. How class would that be? And then the writer tells us this powerful, powerful truth that every person needs to take heed of. He says this, without faith. It is impossible to please God. Now what that is telling you is you cannot please God. Which means you cannot get into heaven through anything that you will do. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Good works won't get you into heaven. Being religious won't get you into heaven. Going to church won't get you into heaven. Doing nice things for others won't get you into heaven. Without faith in God, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to be accepted by God. There are many people, for example, many, when we go out and do evangelism, we come across this all the time. You will even hear it here. When we go to someone saying, are you a Christian? No, but I believe in God. As if somehow we should give them a damn dirt badge. There are many people say they believe that God exists. And I would argue, as I have done many times, that there isn't a person on the planet who doesn't believe that God exists. But many who say that God doesn't exist choose to believe their own lies. Mm -hmm. But belief, please hear this, belief in God and his existence only isn't enough. Simply believing does not please God. The devil believes in God and he's not getting into heaven. So if you say, I believe in God, it's not enough. Belief is of the mind. It is rooted in head knowledge only. And knowledge of God cannot save anyone. However, faith, faith is found in the heart. And it is evident by trust in God, believing his word and promises and living in such a way that demonstrates it. Christian faith is about trusting in God, in his word, that he will keep his promises to you. So there's the difference. Do you believe in God? Or do you have faith in God that he will keep his promises to you? You know, some of you here tonight, or some watching in, you have a belief in God. You have a belief in his existence. But you don't have faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Your belief in God cannot, under any circumstances, save you from sin, sin, death, and hell. Head knowledge, knowing that God exists, isn't enough. You need to have faith in God. You need to have faith in his word and trust him. To fulfill his promises to you. God's word teaches that we are all sinners who need to be saved. Who need to be rescued. But because we're sinners. Because we're deserving of death and hell. We can't save. We can't rescue ourselves. And so God in his love and mercy. He sent his son Jesus to die to pay a price for our sin. That we could be made right with God. That we could be forgiven for all of our sin. And that we could have everlasting life. That is how much God loves us. He doesn't just love us and wants to hear our burdens and our griefs about the challenges that we face in life. Whether it be like Sandra with her fear and her cancers. You know, God's interested in us. He's interested in all of the things that we face in life. But what God is looking for is someone to say, Lord... I will trust in you. So let me ask you tonight. Do you have faith in God? Faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance, absolute assurance that we'll get 
what God has promised us? Do you have faith in God? Do you believe his word about your need to be saved? Do you believe him about your need to be rescued? Have you confessed your sin, repented and trusted in Jesus to save you? If you say tonight, I believe in God, I have faith in God, but you haven't confessed your sin, you haven't repented of your sin, and you haven't trusted in Jesus to save you. You don't have faith. You have head knowledge, and head knowledge cannot save. You are still on your way to hell. Do you have faith in God? Do you believe his word about your need to be saved, to be rescued? Have you confessed your sin, repented, and trusted in Jesus and in Jesus alone to save you? Or will you just continue living with your head knowledge, believing God exists, but doing nothing about it? Sandra tonight, Sandra is planting, sowing the seed of God's word in hearts and minds. She didn't stand up here and preach from the Bible. She stood up and preached from her life. This is where I was at. And I called out to a God of mercy who in mercy rescued me. What a testimony that is. How beautiful that God would reach down to Sandra and say, you're mine. I'll take you as mine. Sandra is planting and sowing the seed of God's word in the hearts and minds of those who will listen and receive what she says. Do you believe, Sandra, tonight? Yes. yes. Well, how is it going to change you? Do you believe, Sandra, tonight? Or do you think she's telling lies about this merciful God who met her in her darkest hour? Like the old lady planting the orange trees, Sandra may not see the fruit of her labor from tonight. She may not see it this side of heaven. But in love for the Lord and for you, she plants the seed of God's word in faith, believing that his word will not return to him empty or void, but will fulfill its purpose. And in the right time, it will produce fruit to the glory of God. This is Faith. Sandra standing up here tonight giving her testimony is a testimony to faith in God. It's much more than head knowledge and this type of faith. That faith that Sandra has is the faith that pleases God. I will trust you, O oh God. No matter what may happen to me, I will trust you. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Let's pray. Father, tonight we want to thank you again for Sandra and her testimony. We thank you, Lord, that you met her in her darkest hour, that you drew near her, Lord God, that you, you dealt with her fears, you dealt with the cancer, Lord, and you brought her through that period of time, Lord God, in her life where she just didn't know where to turn. And then, Lord, she turned to you and she found hope and she found confident assurance in your word. Lord, thank you for the testimony that you have given her, that Sandra could stand up tonight and tell forth the goodness of God in her life. Thank you that all of those years, Lord, you have been her source of strength. You have sustained her. And you have kept her, Lord, faithful to you. Lord, as she says, she's not perfect yet. Lord, she may at times revert from being a Mary to a Martha and be busying herself in, in the things of the world, but never forgetting that she loves you and that she owes you an eternal debt of gratitude because you have rescued her. And just as you have rescued her, Sandra is making clear that you can do the same for others. If people will just listen, if people will just act upon what she is saying and put their trust in you, the God of mercy, in you, the God of grace, who sent your son Jesus into this world to die, 
to pay the price for our sin so that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, thank you for the seed that Sandra has sown tonight. And we believe, Lord, in this fellowship that your word will not return to you void, but it will bear fruit to the glory of God in the right time. And may Sandra live to see that fruit to the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Amen.